Happy Monday, I'm Anna. I'm wearing a swatch that just has the Cats musical logo on it. It doesn't work. Today we're comparing the Tudor Black Bay 58 to a Rolex Submariner 14060. Boom, watch fam. The Rolex, Submariner, and Tudor Black Bay lines are certainly closely related, but they do serve very different audiences of people who are looking for a sports or a dive watch. The brands themselves were founded by the same man, Hans Wilsdorf. After creating Rolex, Hans Wilsdorf wanted to create another brand to feature the same quality and design, but be available for a slightly lower price, and that brand was Tudor. While some might think that that means that Tudor is inherently less than Rolex, in reality, Tudor actually has a long history of its own high quality watchmaking and design, which most in the industry would consider to be top notch Swiss watchmaking, both in their vintage models and modern. So let's get into the watches. First, the Rolex Submariner. Since its official release in 1954, the Submariner sought to appease the serious diving community as well as be an evening wearer for those who were looking for a versatile watch to be both dress and sport. And it does just that. Rolex Submariners have been seen on the wrists of James Bond, Steve McQueen, serious watch enthusiasts, and totally oblivious fanboys who just want to own the Rolex. There are dozens of references that through over half a decade of watchmaking have changed slightly in design, in metal, in caliber, and in sizing. However, the allure of the Submariner never went away. Today we have a Rolex Submariner 14060. This model was initially produced starting in 1990. It preceded the famous 5513 model and is arguably a perfect balance between the best of vintage and the best of modern Submariner design. Taking design cues from the more vintage Submariner dials, it has no date function and therefore no cyclops, which a lot of people like for its purity. It features a unidirectional aluminum bezel, which will take a beating while displaying eventual signs of age and wear when exposed to the elements. This can be a positive or a negative depending on your preference for patina. The case is 40 millimeters in diameter and its profile is certainly more slender than the beefy Rolex Submariner cases of today. The case features crown guards and lug holes, thank you, an oyster bracelet with a great clasp, and 300 meters of water resistance thanks to the sapphire crystal and the triple lock crown. It's powered by the Caliber 3000, which runs at Rolex's standard 28,800 VPH. The Caliber 3000 would eventually gain COSE certification, but the 14060 models are not marked as such, although the Caliber did eventually get certified later on. These models start at about $7,000, and depending on the quality of the exam, Example, they go up from there. And now the Tudor Black Bay 58. In 2012, Tudor surprised the watch community with their release of the Heritage Black Bay, and now, after years of releasing different iterations of this line, it's turned into a family of watches that is extremely well loved by specifically the enthusiast community. The Black Bay 58 came out in 2018, and while abiding by the Black Bay formula, it definitely has a presence of its own. In fact, much like the 14060 from Rolex, the Black Bay 58 takes some of the best of vintage Tudor, I'm talking 50s Tudor Submariners, and the best of the Tudor Black Bay line. So really they're both kind of sitting in this middle ground that just takes the best influences from modern and vintage, which is very interesting. The Black Bay 58 as well as the 14060 blend these two worlds of watchmaking together very well. Its stainless steel case is 39 millimeters in diameter and 11.9 millimeters in thickness, making it both thinner and smaller than the standard Black Bay, but nearly matching the Rolex exactly in wrist presence. This watch is water resistant up to 200 meters. It features an aluminum bezel insert. Its case is crown guardless, doesn't have crown guards, and it features thick bevels on the lugs. It also has a fan favorite vintage touch, which is its rivet bracelet, which is executed very nicely. The thing that I would say has the most personality about this watch is the gilt dial and the warmth that it gives off. The second marks text on the dial hands are all gold toned and even slightly pink gold toned. Its hands and markers feature Fotina, 
a design decision that I personally find charming. Its bezel features a coin edge finish and the red triangle accent at the pearl on the bezel offers a nod to both vintage Tudor and Rolex Submariner designs and fits on the watch very nicely. Like the Rolex, this watch is time only. The in-house Tudor Caliber MT5402 is a brand new movement that was created specifically for this watch. It features a 70 hour power reserve and is COSC certified. This watch retails at $3,700. Now let's look at these watches together. The Rolex is the original iconic Submariner design. It basically defined this serious luxury dive watch category. Its details are fine, sharp, strong, and precise. It's completely unsaturated. Almost to the point I wouldn't go so far as to say it is, but it could potentially, compared to the Tudor, be seen as a bit sterile. However, its size, weight, build, and combination of years of perfecting this design come together brilliantly. The 14060 is not quite the attention seeker that many modern Submariners are. It's one of the most versatile and universally loved watches. And when you wear it on your wrist, it's easy to see why. The Black Bay 58 is in its own way bolder in wear and in personality. I think it speaks to a more specific or more tailored audience. The Black Bay 58 is a cherry picking of some of the best qualities from vintage models and delivers them in a loose, less rigid format. For some people, this could be sort of screaming, vintage inspired in your face, which might come off a bit too strong but the design is still definitely staying within the Black Bay line. Half the price of the Rolex, this is a fantastic option for people looking for a dive watch with brand heritage and great design. Neither watches are boasting, neither are too masculine. They toe the line between vintage and modern very well. They both have universally appealing diameters. They fit easily and wear comfortably on the wrist and they're both very versatile. Frankly, they're both amazing watches and they're both available in the Theo and Harris watch shop link is below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to Theo and Harris for more. We post videos every week and we have new watches listed in the Theo and Harris watch shop every week as well. See you next Monday.